Nikki the God. Y'all give her a black hand real quick. Give Nikki the God a black hand. That sister does phenomenal work out here on these internet streets. Give my sister a nice FBA hand. We are in the building. Y'all come on in here, man. We're going to chop it up tonight. How many folks we got in so far? We got in. Let me see. All right. Almost 250 in the first 10 seconds. That's good. Let's get these numbers on up. Y'all give me a retweet. Let everybody know we're live right now. Give me a retweezle and let everybody know that we're live. Um, we're going to get right into the game, man. Um, well, so where are my Detroit people? Where's the Detroit family? Shout out to Detroit. Shout out to the D. Shout out to everybody in the D. As you know, um, they're really stomping hard for Kamala Harris. They're campaigning hard for her. And they're putting together a lot of music acts to support her. The Hollywood system is just really going into overdrive. The entertainment industry is really stomping hard for Kamala. They're really, really stomping hard for her. I mean, they're putting just uh, uh, boatloads of money behind Kamala. Did y'all hear where, um, didn't Bill Gates just give like $50 million to um, her campaign? If I'm not mistaken, family, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if, if I'm accurate on that because there's so much news coming and I don't know how accurate certain things are, but I did hear that Bill Gates put like 50 of them things on her campaign. Is that accurate? So they're just, this woman is getting money thrown at her by the system. And what's interesting, she's still low key losing. <laughs> That's crazy. They're throwing all that money at her at that campaign. They're pulling out all the stops and low key, Kamala's still losing. That is very interesting. What's up, brother Afro Elite? What's up, great black shark? I see you. But um, why they, I mean, they got Eminem. They brought Eminem out in Detroit, you know, Michigan. That's a swing state. So they're really trying to um, hit them swing states real hard. They're really trying to um, galvanize that black vote. See, the, the swing states have the black votes because those urban centers, black people can make or break a campaign. So they're stumping hard for Michigan. And they brought a Michigan native, Eminem, out. Obama went out there, brought Eminem out. And... Um, I want to know, do you guys think it was effective? I'm going to get your calls in a minute. Do you think him bringing out Eminem was effective? Raise your hand if you want to chime in on that. And down there in Atlanta, when they had Usher down there, they, they, they're they doing all these musical performances for Kamala, bringing out all these artists. Do y'all think that this thing is effective when they do that? Let's get Brother Ani. Brother Ani, do you think it was effective when they had um, Obama and brought Eminem out there in the D? Go ahead, Brother Ani. Hop on, sir. Brother Ani, where you at? Yo, what's going on, Rick? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. That Obama was so corny doing oh, that yeah. Eminem thing, man. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> What I what I what I uh, saw that, and it, they're pandering real hard right now, and I want the family to stay focused, because one thing I noticed they're doing, you talked about this a long time ago. I think they're using Kamala in this little LGBT thing. You remember when you talked about transracial identity? Yeah. Way back on a pro, uh, on a uh, broadcast you did. I think they're trying to play that with her right now. Oh, yeah. Like her playing, like when you say cosplaying, I think she's actually doing this transracial identity because she is not of our lineage. She is not black, but people are so focused to push that point. And I just want to hear your opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a very good point, man. They, they've been trying to cross lineate this woman. They've been trying to do what I, I call trans lineation. They're trying to give her a trans lineage. You notice that? 
they got this thing now where they want to just do some, I'm white and I say so, and I'm going to do some hocus pocus and voila, you're not a man no more, you're a woman. I'm going to do some hocus pocus and voila, you're not East Indian no more, you're black. I'm going to do some hocus pocus, voila, you're not Caribbean no more, you're an FBA. What? They, 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 they keep trying to do this genetic alchemy that we're rejecting. It's I'm white and I say so on steroids. We say, hey, man, this woman ain't from our damn lineage. And that's what it is. And that's why there's so much pushback, because when you start defining certain things as a group and you stand on it and you don't let people redefine it for you, that's power, ladies and gentlemen. Family, when we stand on our FBA lineage and tell people, no, that woman ain't from our lineage, we're making a power move and we're never supposed to make power moves. As foundation of black Americans, we're supposed to just do what the hell we're told. Ain't that what they tell us? The MSNBC, Boule, um, Democratic Shield crowd, like um, what's that Tiffany Cross? Remember she got on TV? You know, do what you told. Black men just need to do what you told. That's why the attack on black men is so heavy. Because black men are standing on business. Black men are stepping in front saying, hey, no, this candidate ain't what it what it's supposed to be. We ain't feeling her. The community ain't feeling her. And we're not going to really stand behind her like that. They don't want black men making power moves like that because a lot of the sisters are following suit. A lot of black men and black women, I'm talking about foundational black American men and women, we're not going for the gender divide. We're standing um, toe to toe with each other. We're standing side by side with each other, going up against the oppressive system, which is how we're supposed to do it. I despise the fact that the Democrats and Kamala and these people keep trying to cause a gender divide. That is detrimental to our community. We're not divided. Foundational Black American men and foundational Black American women, we always rock with each other. I rock with my sisters. I love my sisters to life. I put my life on the line for these sisters. And many of us brothers will do that. You're not going to create some damn janky gender divide. The sisters are riding with us and we're riding with them. We all need each other. Y'all do not do that gender divide with these other groups. You don't go to the East Indian community and do that gender divide stuff. They do not do that gender divide stuff with the Latino community. You don't never hear them say, Latino women, they the backbone of this. Latino women, are this. they don't do that. They deal with them as a group as they should. They get with us and they try to disempower us with a gender divide. And this whole narrative that I really despise, if we don't, support the Hindu bedwench, we're misogynistic. You understand? If we don't support somebody who ain't of our lineage, who ain't going to do a damn thing for us, they're telling us that we are misogynistic. I take great offense to that. And you should too. Let's get Veli Vale. She's out here in Detroit. Sister Vale, hop on, beloved. What up, though? What up, though? Oh, that's a dude. Okay, I thought you were a woman. Okay, my bad. Shit. Was that hey. your grandmother? Is that your grandmother on your picture or something? Yeah, yeah, FBA, FBA. Yeah, that's my uh my grandma uh, sister actually. There you go. There. Yeah. Oh, but um, how you doing, bro? Um, just want to tell you, uh, they with Obama again, bro. Um, at this point, I think Obama kind of just hurting her causes, bro. Cause Eminem, he's not really like, he's not a. We don't fuck with Eminem like that in Detroit, bro. Like, I know. Yeah, I know. He's not really I know. Our this. culture. You know, so like and he rapping in lyrics, it just it was cringy, you know. So I just want to tell you, uh, keep doing what you do. I'm gonna land my plane because of my work, bro. But you to go, keep popping your shit, and don't let these tethers. Uh, uh another, another thing, and majority of black people that say Eminem is the goat are tethers, by the way. No grassroots are saying that, bro. We didn't, we didn't, I'm from Detroit. I did not grow up listening to him. I'm from Seven Mile. We didn't grow up listening. That's it, you know. The grassroots. That's what it is. Yeah, that's a little, a little secret for everybody. And and I like some of Eminem stuff. I, I think Eminem can rap. I mean, he's not the greatest, but I, I I like some of Eminem stuff. I think he can he can flow a little bit. But let me let me tell y'all a secret, man. The, the D, the black folks in Detroit, man, they they ain't on Eminem like that. They don't really. The black folks in Detroit don't really prop him up like that. In fact, you know. They they just don't really prop him up like that. I'm not I'm not going to denigrate the guy. I don't want to, you know, yeah, yeah, 
you can make him catch strays because of the Obama thing and Kamala thing. But the D don't really rock with him like that, like that. You know, they 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 cool with him, but they don't really stomp for him like that. Meaning that him going up here stomping for Kamala, that ain't going to move the crowd in Detroit. I'll put it that way. Eminem going up here stomping for Kamala, that, that's not going to galvanize the brothers and sisters in Detroit at all. You understand? And, and that's not a diss towards Eminem. Again, I don't have a problem with Eminem, but that's just not galvanizing the people. Let me get my brother Afro Elite in the building. Afro, what's up, brother? What's up, Tariq? You hear me? I can hear you, brother. What's going on? I got a couple of things about the Eminem. If we notice when he first came out, there was a big corporation push with Eminem trying to make him the GOAT, make him the face of hip hop uh, back when he first came out with the Slim State Shady stuff. When he started getting addicted to drugs, he fell off and he never really, despite the corporate push, he never really came back on like that. That's mm -hmm. why in the last few years, he's been trying to play this uh, white ally role where he's been like taking a knee and he's been throwing his fist up in the air. It's stuff Eminem is not known for doing. Eminem is trying to catch back on. So he's trying to up, uh, brand himself as this white ally to the black community so he can kind of get back on. A lot of people don't know Eminem came out with an album this year. Most people don't know that because it didn't really go nowhere. Mm. Eminem has been dropping albums after albums and they have not gone anywhere. He does not have the relevance he once had at all. Eminem doesn't have the relevance of most rappers today, if we're going to be very honest. So he's doing this so he can try to seem like an ally, so he can try to seem progressive. But honestly, uh, to answer your question, it's not effective because Eminem doesn't have any influence, not really even in the rap game today, to be honest. You go, my man, Afro Elite in the building, Afro Elite. But yeah, man, they're really pulling out all the stops. They're pulling out all the stops. Everybody give me a retweet. Y'all retweet this space to let everybody know we're in here. Everybody just take two seconds and give a retweet. And I'm going to get some more calls in a second. But listen, you know what it is, family? Why is the, the Hollywood music industry and the entertainment industry just really going so hard body in the tech industry as well? going so hard for Kamala Harris. Why are they going so hard for her? And the Democrats, basically. They're going so hard for this woman who has the personality of a shoe. Why are they going so hard? And the public ain't really rocking with her like that. That's why they got all this money behind her and she ain't really um, leading in front of Trump. She's still low-key losing. But why are they putting so money, much money behind her in the Hollywood system? See, one reason is because, you know, Hollywood, they receive a lot of um, tax breaks from the government. And um, they're dependent on state level incentives. Yeah, Hollywood is real big on that. They need a lot of those incentives and, and regulatory breaks that the, the government can issue um, in regards to distribution and the films and just a lot of stuff they get from the, the government system. Also, they're clicked in with the, the big tech and the big surveillance people, you know, the Silicon Valley crowd and Hollywood is clicked in with the, um, the Google's Facebook's and all of these um, social media platforms and they get little kickbacks and, um, they get government subsidies in the whole nine yards. And another thing, the, the entertainment business, they are really stomping behind Kamala because they need some of those um, government goodies and some of those legislations to allow them to do corporate and cultural manipulation with all of this surveillance stuff that goes on with social media. Y'all better understand, man, and I got to do a deep dive on how social media is used to do surveillance and just keep track on everybody. You understand? And the, the Hollywood system and the big tech systems and those corporations, they're all clicked in with each other. They work hand in hand and they work with government entities to get laws passed so they can spy on people. A lot of the conservatives don't like that. 
But a lot of the left wingers, that's that's their whole thing. They they allow that stuff to happen. It's a real interesting dynamic. And this is why the Hollywood system, they get their artist to go out here and and toe the line for the Democrats. That's why you got all of these entertainers running out here, basically being held hostage, like, hey, you better go out here and stump for our candidate, or you might not get that next role. You understand? Especially with the black entertainers. The black entertainers are living hand to damn mouth. It's why you got these rappers trying to get put on again. You you got plies and all of these people kind of towing the line. The only entertainers that's really telling the truth are the ones who are independent, who are not fully dependent on the system. They know how to go out here and get it on their own. Like Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin has been going in on Kamala Harris, but Eddie Griffin can go somewhere and, um, you know, sell out an arena without the corporate structure because he has a track record like that. So he's one of the ones going in on Kamala and the Democrats. You see? And also, you got to understand Hollywood has always been the major DNC funding machine. They've always been big backers of the the DNC. You know? And um, also, with some of these lifestyle, sexual lifestyle situations that's pushed by the left-wingers, they need that legislation coming from um, the government. They need them to co-sign off the off this stuff and and normalize it and put these laws out here so that they can monetize it. And and again, the whole trans thing, I told you all about that, the whole trans thing, look at the word trans. They're using the word trans all across the board. They're normalizing the word trans. They'll say transgender, then it'll become transracial. Then they get into some transhumanism. And you better understand what that is. When you get certain procedures done, and I broke this down not too long ago, when you get certain procedures done on your body, your DNA, if it gets altered by a patented substance, technically, that is transhumanism. And technically, that can be patented. You can be owned, technically. It's some real deep stuff because if they can put something in you that has a patent and it alters your DNA and turns you into a transhuman and y'all better look up transhumanism. I broke this down almost a decade ago. If you are now transhuman, you are not really a human. So you don't have the same rights as a human being. So now the constitution can protect you. Certain governing bodies can't protect you. Big tech and the Hollywood system and the entertainment industry they can kind of do with you what what they want to do. They can have a certain level of control over you. If you are a transhuman, think about that. We got to start thinking like chess moves. When they say certain things, look at what they mean and what they mean for later on down the line and look at why they're pushing certain things. You understand? And look at the people who's pushing back from it. Look at certain things that were being pushed by the left-wingers. I won't say no names. I won't say what was pushed. Y'all know what it is. And look at the people who were against that stuff. You understand? And look at some of the conspiracies that were behind certain things that were pushed. What were people saying about certain things? I got to watch my words here. That's another thing, family. Because you want to know control. If you say certain things, your page gets flagged. You get banned if you say certain things about certain procedures. You know how heavy that is? I've had some of my videos where they've gone back and I guess they're using some kind of AI scrubbing machine where they're just scrubbing old episodes of people's um, podcasts and, and videos. And they're finding words and narratives where I mention certain things and they say, oops, that's misinformation. We have to take that video down. I mean, this is from a couple of years ago. They just they got AI bots scrubbing the internet for certain keywords about certain things that were mandatory on us. I gotta watch words. This is heavy. You understand? 
Look at the people giving this big ass money to Kamami, who's a weak candidate. Why are they giving all this big money to this woman? She's a weak candidate. They need her weak because they know that she'll do anything. They tell her she, listen, y'all know, let, let, let's talk turkey. Kamala Harris can barely read off a teleprompter. When the teleprompter, you remember when she was doing a speech and the teleprompter went out, that woman was like a deer in headlights. She can't think for her damn self. They can't even have this woman on interviews by herself. Remember, they had to do some of the first interviews. She had to sit there with Tim Walz basically holding her hand, and that was taped. They had to tape it. Then when they start letting her do interviews by herself, she's she craps her pants. She just falls all apart. They give her a little pushback. She gets to tweak it and buck in her eyes. That's a weak candidate, man. That woman can't stand on business. And that's what they want. They want somebody who's weak, who they can control, who's not going to push back. Kamala's going to do anything the corporate structure tells her to do. That's the perfect candidate for them. They don't want a candidate who's going to say, oh, hell no, I'm a, I got an executive order. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the opposite of what you guys are trying to do. They don't want no strong candidate. And, and my thing is, listen, from a business standpoint, I like people who know how to handle business. I'm not, I like people who can stand on business. Can you imagine Kamala Harris? with her little old chopper suit wearing self somewhere in a world meeting with some of these heavyweights, with some of these big dogs, with Putin and some of these folks, Kim Jong-il or whoever. Oh, can you imagine her with some of these heavyweights, these dudes out here, these world leaders who stand on business for real? And she gets in there cackling. Come on, I don't want her sitting around Putin and them dudes cackling. You know, I don't know that I'm nervous about that. You dig? I'm very nervous about that. That woman, a calculus all the way to World War Damn Three. Y'all dumbasses sitting up here supporting her because she went to a black church. Most of y'all ain't doing that, but come on, man, we got to stop dumbing out like that. Her going to a black church, that don't mean nothing. And they're really putting it on us. They really want us to stomp for her. Because again, Foundation of Black Americans, we set the trends. And too many of us are pushing back against Kamala. That's the problem. And that's why a lot of folks in the dominant society, you know, there's a lot of reservations for the, from them as well. But a lot of us in, in black society, we're pushing back. We're, say, we're saying, hey, that's not our candidate. And people can see that. Let me get Great Black Shark in the building. Great Black Shark in the building. What's up, my brother? Salute to you, brother. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm grand, my brother. I hope all is well with your family. I want to make three quick points, man. And uh, first and foremost, speaking to the topic of the room, I doubt that the on-code Detroit brothers and sisters are feeling any of that going on with Eminem. If anything, those brothers and sisters up there in Detroit are thinking about their bottom line and their economics. And the three quick points I want to make is, in an odd way, we actually owe the dirty demonic Democrats a thank you. Oh, yes, we owe them a thank you. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. They've created generational lineage synergy between foundational Black American freedmen Gen X, Millennials, and Gen Z. And shout out to the on code boomers out there. The second point I want to make is this. That whole gender divide thing, oh, it's game over for that when it comes to black women. Because if you think back to the pandemic, sisters see who were the ones that were most evicted. It was them. They're looking at things across the board when it comes to these illegal aliens coming over here getting tangible. So their great enemy regarding that gender divide with our sisters who are very intelligent. I'm proud of all you sisters that are standing on the right side of history. Sisters are looking at, at math, okay? Yeah. And last point I want to make, brother, the reason, in my opinion, in estimation, maybe you can speak to this, the reason why Hollywood is so galvanized to be behind them, Hollywood for many a decade in this country has been used as a distraction for the masses by the politicians. I mean, for example, go back to the pandemic. Remember, they were telling us with the so-called beer bug, watching my words here. Right. They don't know it's so contagious. You can't go here. You can't go there. And it was a serious thing. However, 
they were in a risk to get sports stadiums back filled up, concert mm -hmm. arenas, got to get you back in these movies. Now, when you think about everything else that they put these restrictions on, that shows that Hollywood as a distraction is an important component of how they keep control of the masses. Because I'll land with this. They at the average politician, and we're talking about primarily Democrats in this case, they view the American public as very foolish. So they kind of use Hollywood like jingling some keys in front of a little baby to distract us from the real issues that we need to be focused on. But Democrats, I got bad news for you. It's game over. But well, that's it. I'll let my plan. My man, I appreciate that. Yeah, that gender divide nonsense. We ain't going for that. We're not going for that gender divide stuff. Y'all not going to sit here. I saw someone, they had Stacey Abrams. They dug her out from somewhere talking about some misogyny and sexism. That That's a talking point coming from the DNC, by the way. They're sending all of their shields. When they all get on TV saying the same thing, that means there's a memo going around. So the memo is, well, yeah, a lot of black men. They don't want to vote for Kamala because they don't want to see a woman. A lot of black men are just misogynistic. You know, racism and misogyny is the same thing. It's the same branch on the same tree. It's the hell out of here. And with Kamala Harris, that's like your mama. No, it ain't like my damn mama. No, she ain't. I'm, I'm very offended by that. We're not misogynistic because we don't want to support a damn Hindu bedwench. Black, fo black, black family, don't let them shame you. You are not misogynistic. You are not obligated to support a Hindu damn bedwench. You, under no circumstances are you obligated to support that. Y'all out of y'all damn mind if you think you're going to shame us into supporting a Hindu bedwench. You are sick. And then try to say we're misogynistic because we're not for her BS. That's not going to work. I ain't no, I'm not no misogynist. I do not have a problem with black women being in certain positions of leadership. I don't have a problem with that. Y'all not going to sit up and make Kamala Harris the face of black women because she's not. That woman is not of our lineage. You're not going to sit up and tell me we don't like to to look at strong black women leaders or whatever. Let me tell you something. You're not going to pull that on me. My idols were black women. People who I literally idolized. Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. That's a person that I idolized. Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, her books, her book, the I, that, that book was the book that woke me up. You understand? I mean, idolized that woman. That book woke me up. Shaharazad Ali, that was another one of my idols. Two of my biggest idols of black women. Love those women. You understand? For real, for real, idolize. I'm talking about, listen, my, my son, I named my son after Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. My son's middle name is Cress. That's how much I rock with Dr. Welsing. I named my son after her. He, her his middle name is Cress. Don't tell me about no damn. We don't like black women this and black women that. No, we, we man, if you are a writer, we give sisters all the praise. We give our sisters praise nonstop when they are riders for the community, those who are praiseworthy. Our sister Vicki Dillard does great work. We love that sister, phenomenal sister. We give her praises and props all the time. Love that sister. Where's Wani Spots? Wani, that's my other sister. Love Wani. Wani's so phenomenal. We got a display. We got a uh, an image of Wani at the Hidden History Museum. Wani's a phenomenal sister. Love that sister. You understand? We give props where props to do. We give praises to those who are praiseworthy. We give props and praises to the foundation of Black American um, women in our communities who hold the communities down who feed the communities, who take care of the kids in the community, who help people's families in the community when they're in need. Those are the queen mothers, those church elders that we love and respect. We respect them all day. That, that respect and love does not extend to a Hindu bedwinch that locked brothers and sisters up left and right and then went home to lay up with her damn white zaddy. 
I do not owe her the same amount of praise as I do these other foundational black American women, and neither do you. And we will not be shamed. You know, I, you know what? I saw something, and I put this on my Twitter. There were some people, they were protesting. I don't know if they were protesting Palestine or something. They were protesting something. And they had a sign, and I didn't like this sign they put up. The sign was, dream bigger than a black woman president committing genocide. So that was a shot at Kamala Harris. And I'm like, I don't like that. I don't like that because when it's something negative, they're going to try to blacken her up so they can dump on black women. I didn't like that at all. That's why I don't like her with all that cosplaying bullshit as black. Because when something negative goes down, black women catch strays because of this little musty bed wench who ain't even a foundational black American woman. I don't like that at all, because if it's going to be something positive, they're going to be like, oh, East Indian, first Indian American, the first Asian American, the first Indian, Indian, Asian. They're not going to put the dirt on the Indian and the Asian part. But because she's cosplaying as us, what happens, all the dirt and the filth gets thrown on black women. I don't like that shit. I don't like it. That's why I do not like her cosplaying. Because she does this whole three-card Monty, this whole thing where you can kind of change what your identity is going to be in the moment. Right there, it shows you ain't black. We don't get that luxury. That's the part of what blackness means. Blackness means there's no sanctuary, so you just got to stand on some damn business. You can't run and hide your ethnicity. And because we couldn't run and hide and um, disguise or camouflage our ethnicity, damn it, we just had to stand on business and fight for hours. That's what makes us black. That's what makes foundational black Americans fly. We didn't have the luxury to run and hide nowhere. We didn't have the luxury to get into some type of genetic escapism. We had to deal with it. And that toughened up our resolve. That made us tough people. That made our spiritual essence stronger. Yeah, we don't get to pass for something else. Yeah, other groups do that. They play that little game. They get to kind of pass for some other group. So they, they, that's why they don't really have no culture. These other groups, their culture ain't really as rooted and as thorough as ours. It's it's really not. Let me get um brother, let me get Grinds in here. Let me get um Deb Light. Let's get Deb Light in here. Let's get Deb Light, Miss Deb. Let's get Deb Light. All right. Ms. Deb, you look like a, a K-Hive supporter. Yeah, all day, every day. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> we, got, we got the K-Hive in the house. I saw you giving them thumbs down. Where you from, Deb? <laughs> I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. I am from the land of J.D. Vance. I was, uh -oh. was born in um, Hamilton, Ohio, which is right down the road from Middletown. They were like our biggest um, football rival when I was in high school. And where's your family from originally? My family is from Memphis by way of Arkansas. My mama was born in Stuttgart, Arkansas, and her people were um, a minister and a school teacher. My mom, my grandparents, and they eventually settled in Memphis. And my mother was a part of the Great Migration North, um, where she the tail end in the seventies. And um, she became a school teacher because the people here protested um, that they didn't have enough black school teachers. And she went to a teacher's college in Memphis Are and eventually moved here. Hold on. Is your family descendants of freedmen? Yes. Yes. Um, on both sides. On both sides. Uh, literally, um, the pe my, my dad's people are from Iowa and like my like my great great grandfather literally escaped to Iowa and started a farm there and eventually had a barbecue sauce thing going and but yeah. Okay. So because Iowa was a free state, so that's where we landed and that's where I ended up being born in Iowa. Oh. Going what the hell? Who what how many black people are in Iowa but me? So yeah, there's yeah. that. So you grew up around a lot of white folks? I grew up around a lot of damn white folks. In Iowa, and then I'd spend summers with my grandparents in Memphis, and then Hamilton, Ohio is no joke either. There's a lot of white folks there, because all those people where J.D. Vance is from, they come from Kentucky. They still call Hamilton, Hamilton and Middletown, Hamiltucky and Middletucky, because they recruited those people for the steel mills and the paper mills in these little small towns. Yeah. And that's, yeah. 
So, there you go. So, you're out there in Cincinnati, stomping hard for Kamala, and you're Gen X, right? You're Gen X? Gen X. All day. Yes, indeed. So, what are you supporting Kamala for other than <laughs> Trump is bad? Are there any proactive reasons you're supporting Kamala? Kamala, yes. And um, I can't call her Kam- Kamala because that was the name of that wrestler. And that just seems kind of racist. But Kamala, I'm supporting her. Um, namely because she seems to understand the issues of my generation. Um, especially the especially the most recent one. Um, my mom is I told you my mom was a came up here as a school teacher and she's a retired school teacher now. She's 75 with multiple sclerosis. And I spent the last year um pretty much not working, mostly taking care of her. I've had to work from home and um and her latest thing for me with being able to have home health care aids covered by Medicare, which is not a thing. Most people think if you have Medicare, you can just get a home health aid. It does not work that way. The only way you can get a home health care aid is if they come home for after a hospital stay and it's very limited, like the nursing care you can get. So I've literally spent the last year taking care of my mother. Her understanding this and making it a part of her policy changes the game for me. Like, it means I can get back into the workforce. It means I can do things that I haven't been able to do for the past year. It means now, I can actually take up. better care of my mom. Okay, now, now. So, I, it's, oh, it's a up. game changer for me. That okay. one is. Okay, now, hold on. <clears throat> every woman who has to take care, or every man who has oh. to take care of aging parents, that's going to be a game changer for Excuse us. Me, are you pro Kamala? Did I get up and start throwing up hundreds for the wrong person? Is, is she pro Kamala Tariq? Yes, she is. Oh, yeah. I, I take care of my mother, too. I'm a nurse. I'm a licensed nurse. And she mm-hmm. they just put her on hospice. And, and I do agree that they won't pay for certain things, but I ain't voting for no Kamala. I'm black. Well, I am. I'm black. I, I am I'm extra black. black. I'm I don't. First. She does not care about black people. Um, no, her insurance isn't paying for anything, but I'm finding a way. See, we take care of our people. Our lineage, we take right. care of our mothers and our fathers. We don't just run and put them in a nursing home. So Exactly. I refuse. I moved in with my mom. I refuse to put my mom in a nursing home. Yeah, but, but um, I, I hate to see you use this and use this as a way to support Kamala. I take care of my mother every day. Just like I said, they put her on hospital. Right. I, 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 she's sitting here right next to me right now. And I'm still voting for. Um, well, I'm, I'm still, still not gonna... voting for her, but I'll wait for you to finish because I have more to say. I mean, the only reason I'm awake right now is 3 a.m. here, and so I went to sleep for a while around nine, and I got back up, and I'm up because I'm doing laundry, and I got to get food ready for tomorrow. And so, yeah, this is a 24-hour shift around here. If anybody understands taking care of parents, taking care of business, is me. I sleep when I can. I do what I can. I work during the day from home doing this little customer service weird job but it's something i can do from here and yeah i've carved out i've completely revamped my life so i can take care of my mother so i get that and i know a lot of us are doing it and um the the home health and not me not having to bankrupt yourself to put your parents in a home or put your parents in a nursing home and them being able to be get in home care that's a game changer for me nobody else is talking about that nobody else is saying that's a thing she's actually doing it because she had to do it she had to take care of her mother who had cancer the fact that she understands that for me that's what i'm voting for if it's if it comes down to one damn issue for me that's it okay let me let me get brother reverend damian jones to chime in because reverend jones is stumping for trump go ahead um dr jones Brother, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm blessed, brother. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much, sir. Good. My first time on your stage, man. Respect to you, brother. Yes, sir. So how do you feel about what the young lady is saying about her supporting Kamala because of some of the health care benefits? Um, no, I, I mean, I, I respect how people want to vote. They can vote however they like to vote. Uh, we all have our different reasons based on our personal background and whatever's going on. Hey, she has something going on with her, her mother, which yeah. I respect that. And if she feels like the policies that the uh, Harris administration are going to benefit her, 
Um, I support that. I'm not one to get on this app and argue with people about how they want to vote. Uh, somebody's going to be wrong. Somebody's going to be right. Uh, but what I have noticed, Brother Tariq, is that well-meaning black people have woken up uh, in large numbers, particularly black men, and they're seeing right through the facade that has been the Democratic Party for for decades. But I want to ask you this. Have you seen this expose that Candace Owens has been doing the last couple of weeks? Yeah, it's been very interesting. It's a very interesting thing. Yeah, and, and so she uncovered yesterday, y'all. I mean, I know some people are kind of iffy on Candace, but go check some of her information out. She has revealed that Kamala is Jewish. She's mm-hmm. Jewish. There's a lot of Jewish and kind of Hindu in there, which would lead one to think why she decided at the age of 50 to marry a white Jewish man because she's Jewish. Right. I, I mean, check this out. Tariq. So for all these years, if she was raised in the black church, singing in the children's choir at Black Howard, Black A.K.A., So if you're socializing with black men in all these different spaces, there's not a black man that you decide to marry and have children with. And then you decide to marry a white Jewish man. Hey, marry who you want to marry. I'm just kind of connecting dots here. Mm. Then then you stand in front of black America and say, I care about you. I want to do certain things for you. Here's the other thing. After this, 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 this farce of a plan that she put out for black men last week, then this week, shout out to uh, Miss T, she put out a plan for Latino men. Nowhere on that plan for Latino men did I see weed. Why didn't she offer Latino men weed and marijuana as this type of, 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 of carrot on a stick to attract black men? Now, Tariq, I have been uh, involved with campaigns for over a decade. Now, I run campaigns. I know campaigns and politics like the back of my hand. Kamala's campaign is the worst campaign I've ever seen in my lifetime. Mm. The blunders strategically are awful. The Trump campaign is running circles around this this, uh, uh, campaign. She doesn't want to talk to people. She doesn't want to do interviews. Uh, I mean, from what we hear from the inside, her staff briefs her, but she's just not prepared. I don't think I've ever seen a worse public speaker as an elected official in my life. I I don't know about you. You've been around and seen some things, too. Agree. Horrible. She's horrible at public speaker. She falls apart anytime you push back. She just she freaks out and starts twitching. She's horrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, uh, brother, kudos to you. I'm proud of black men. As you see on the mainstream media, they have no other choice now. But to air when you're seeing these everyday regular black people in Detroit, in Atlanta, in Houston, in L.A., they are just, you know, I'm going to say this and I'll shut up after this. Four years ago, you would get excoriated on this app as a black person supporting Trump. You know, mm-hmm. when I got on here in like 21, 22, I used to get ran down, kicked out of spaces, cussed out, all that kind of stuff for Trump. Now. The tide has turned and people are, are, are seeing not so much that, hey, we think Trump is the savior of America or for black America. We're just saying when we look at our choices of what we have, Trump provides the best option for our people and for America going forward. That's it. After these four years, Trump will be out of the way and then we'll make another choice in another four years. And I'll say this last thing and I'll shut up three. I'm a Republican. Used to be a Democrat. I don't advocate for black people to become Republicans. What I advocate for is black people to make objective choices each political cycle. If you feel like your values align with the Republican Party, by all means be a part of it. If you feel like, hey, I want to leave the Democratic Party and just be independent for a while and just kind of kind of float out there and see what happens, that's fine. Because when you break up with a girlfriend, you don't need to rush into another relationship, right? That's called a rebound. What you need to do is just sit back and just chill, get to know yourself better, recalibrate where you are, and then decide. No. No. Care about the future of your children, of your family, of values, of. Did I lose the connection? Can you still hear me, brother? I hear you. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you care about those things, drag queen story time, Mm. and those types of things, you know, you 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 best vote for Trump. 
because what the Democratic Party is laying out for the future of our listen, I have a 14 year old daughter now. A lot of things matter to me that didn't matter to me six or seven years ago. Right. So if you care about your children, your grandchildren, the, the, the future of this nation, economics, the wage, the dollar, things of that nature. Man, you ought to rush to the polls and vote for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance this election. But thank you for the time, brother. Man, man, thank you so much. All right, let's get um, Brother Dia. I would just like to say something to that. Go ahead, dear. Um, One thing about Middletown, Ohio, which I don't know if you know this, and I told you a lot of those people came from the hills in Kentucky, they brought the Klan with them. There is no way that J.D. Vance is a white man of his Asian experience and ain't been to a cross burning. It's just not possible. No. Like, those people, the people that live in... Hold no, no, no. Deb, you don't want to go there because Biden's idol was a Klan member. Right? Let's not... Oh, y'all don't do that. Um, Biden's idol was a Klan member. All right? Joe Biden's idol was a straight up and down Klan member. Robert Byrd. All right, y'all not going to run from Robert Byrd. Robert Byrd was a card carrying Klan member, ma'am. All right. So let's not, uh, we got a Klan uh, sympathizer. Okay. But hang on a second. But let's hang on a second. It's one yeah. thing to continue to make that choice. You what? you what? I didn't hear you, dear. Okay, Deb, I didn't hear you because yeah, we we're not gonna sit here and ignore Robert Byrd now. Come off your mute, Deb. Unmute yourself. I couldn't because he had muted me. So yeah, but real talk. Um, can we talk about January sixth for a second? Okay. Is that okay? Can I talk about January sixth for a second? Because I want to talk about. I want to talk about. It matters to me because. They brought the Confederate flag into the Capitol, those people. They brought the Confederate flag since the Civil War. They took that Confederate flag into that building. The whole point of the Civil War was that they had never breached the Capitol of America. Those people took that flag into that building. They crossed a line. They crossed a boundary. They literally committed treason. I cannot support the guy who brought them into that building. And I think treason I, I, is letting over all of these damn illegals. That's more treasonous. All right. Because January 6th was one day. We're getting a January 6th every damn day with all of these damn illegals coming over here, stomping down on our neighborhoods and committing all this crime. So we're getting January 6th every day. So yeah, we're, we're, that's treasonous too. So let's talk about all the treason. I don't think treason is people trying to come here for a better life. Uh, you get a better life in your own homeland. I'm not obligated. It shouldn't be my duty to pay for you because you failed back home. Why I got to pay for that? Why my tax dollars got to pay for that? Why are we obligated to pay for somebody who couldn't cut it back home? And then I have to sacrifice what my kids and the people in my community can do. I because America's fueling the drug war in their countries. Because America's directly responsible for hell? that. Because America's not on the gold standard. We're on the drug standard. And if it wasn't for drug money, this, the economy would collapse. That's oh. why. Because America's but directly it, responsible oh, for that. America takes the violence to them, and those people are trying to escape uh, the violence that we oh, brought to their country. And we owe them okay, a damn if, job. Okay, so if America is doing so much, if America was so bad, you wouldn't run to America if America was doing all that to you. All right, if they were doing that. You know what? All these people oh, who say oh, if no, Trump. Because if America was so bad, you wouldn't run your ass up here to the border. If a country is doing you so bad, you wouldn't want to run to it so heavily, ma'am. It don't work like that. All these people who say if Trump gets elected, they want to leave the country, right? Now, so many people, so many of these folks say if Trump leaves, I can't. Leave. I don't. I don't have you muted, dear. I don't have you muted. I got the handle. I got to get FBA goddess in here. FBA goddess, hop in real quick, dear. How you doing, Trick? I just got one quick question for her. Um, she is vice president right now. My question is this. 
What has she done since she's been there for four years that she's so great that you want to vote for her now? I don't I don't understand that when it comes to you Kamala people. I say Kamala because that's what it sounds like to me. Um, mm. But anywho, um, why do y'all vote for her now? You so once gung ho. She was vote running for a president before. Remember, she didn't make it. So what's so good about her now that you want to run and vote? She's so great. Tell me what's so great about her. Go she got to talk about shit. I'm oh, sorry, Katrina. Go ahead, Deb. Well, yeah. I think in a world where, first of all, for three years during the pandemic, we couldn't leave our dang old house. And then a lot of our allies, American allies, didn't trust us anymore. They did not trust America to do the right thing as far as the partnerships we built across the globe. And she has spent the last four years building relationships with rebuilding relationships with our allies and some of the people who really don't like us so much at all. Yeah, and she's been cool. like, as like, far as as far as climate change. Like, oh no, damn, slow down. Deb, if you say something, you're gonna have to elaborate, dear. What relationships is she building with internationally? Uh, I, please, <laughs> when she went over there. It to, is so hard. It is so, you keep saying elaborate, but every time I. Yeah, because you just keep going on. What what relationships is she building? When she went over there, when she went to like uh, Russia or the Ukraine or whatever, she went over there and a war started right after she left. <laughs> what relationship is she building? She went over there to Eastern Europe to talk and they got the Cutting up the minute she left. What relationships is she building? Then we have to start sending money all over the place. What relationship is she building? Go ahead. Come on, Deb. Deb you still keep going on, but you mute me every time I try to talk. <laughs> so it, it makes it seem like I'm not really making a point, but I really am. Um, the global partnerships that she that she's rebuilt with France, Germany, the UK, Britain. Scotland, Ireland, well, that's really the UK, um, reopen talks with China. I don't have you muted, beloved. You're dropping butter biscuit crumbs on your phone, dear. Go ahead, dear. Go ahead. Damn. I literally just put the screenshot in the jumbotron where you muted me because it's like, I, I'm tired. It's like, you ask me a question, but you mute me when I give you an answer. I just don't think you like my answers. And that's okay, because it refutes everything you've been saying night after night after night after night. And I get that, but there is another point of view, and it's just not yours. And I'm sorry, but that's just that's just life. Like, everybody's not going to agree with you. I think a lot of things you say are really... Okay, okay, what you're not going to do, dear. No, 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 what you... No, 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 no. You're not going to babble. Because right now you're babbling. I asked you a question. And when I ask you a question, I don't want you to just babble and rant. I kind of want you to elaborate. You're just kind of saying stuff. You're talking about all of these strong relationships that Kamala has built with France and Ireland. No, not really. You're just saying stuff, sweetie. Okay. Just, just it's, hard for me to it's hard for me to believe you when you. When I, well, sweetie, you're just saying stuff. Uh, you're just saying stuff just because you, you you're just doing it. I'm saying I'm a say so, and it's true. No, ma'am. No. Okay. You you have to elaborate on certain things. All right. Uh, now, go ahead. I, I won't talk, but just 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 don't say stuff just just to be saying it, man. You got to elaborate on certain things. Okay. okay. I can do that without hey, being muted, though. I don't think you can handle that. And, and some of the, I'm not even pushing the mute button on some of these things. So, it just literally says mute it by host every time I talk. Yeah, something is going on with the phone because uh, you're, you're kind of talking, <laughs> paying attention. Let me, hold on, hold your horses one second. Let me get, um, Resurrect, what's your name? Resurrect, Resurrect Minds. Thanks thanks for having me up, uh, Tariq, man. Long time listener. Um, admire everything that you do for the black community and all your projects. Yes, sir. Um, Definitely. Definitely an inspiration to younger black men. Um, I, oh man, I'm just so infuriated with Deb's, you know, talking points because she talks just l like she's coming off of a M MSDNC, um, you know, talk show with Joy Reid or or uh, Rachel Maddow or something. 
the oh, problem we- the problem with people like her is they don't really care about the black community they're they're heavily invested it seems like in this new globalist agenda i'm hearing her talking about uh climate change that's a bunch of bull i implore people just to look up operation popeye project cirrus or projects project cumulus the government has been heavily invested in weather manipulation for a very long time operation popeye is a project they ran in Vietnam from 1967 all the way to 1972. Now, if you think about if they did that back then, how well they perfected that art now in 2024. Um, another thing that she was saying about how the United States- How can States- you say I'm not invested in the black community? I literally teach Sunday school, sir. I volunteer yeah. at my kid's school. More. I literally started a whole. I started a. I started younger, a younger, change. younger black, younger black people do not go to church, man. I mean, the black I community is not I in the literally, church, right? And so that's why I go out into my community mm-hmm. and the young kids that are here. I literally started a nonprofit to help them stay off the streets. They help fix bikes and they work for elderly doing chores. And that and I work with their parents and partnership with the school. Did I like I literally adopted my two nephews because their parents went to jail for selling heroin. And I'm 53 years old, an 11 year old, and an eight year old. Like I support the black community. I support the yeah. black family. I don't see how you yeah. can say that. Yeah, where did who, well, I'm, who I'm gave, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Deb, your nonprofit. What democratic organization helped fund your nonprofit? None. It's through the no democratic organization. I didn't ask anybody. I've worked with the community to help build partnerships with the local businesses and with the schools and with the police department to help get these kids off the streets because they were out here running around wild, taking stuff off of people's back porches, leaving people's um water hoses on. And so we got together as a community and said, hey, we're going to raise these kids because these parents are busy. Um, So I don't see how he can say I'm old, slow, down. See, this is what I'm saying. I got to get that mute button because you just get to ranting. Somebody. I don't think he can say, I don't care about the black community. That was just not nice. Oh, Dawn, somebody's funding your nonprofit is getting money from somewhere. You say from the police. Who else is funding you? You're getting the money from somewhere. Some type of institution is giving money to your nonprofit. The police and who else, dear? Deb? Who else? We went to the we 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 went to every local business in our community and they each fund a certain part of it, but that's it. We don't have any outside funding outside of our own neighborhood. And the parents that are involved and the schools um, have done us, we did a set aside project and a grant and that's it. So we outside of that, we don't have any money. It comes directly from our community. That's it. Who gave you the grant? It was. It's not even really a grant. It's like like we apply for the state or whatever. It's really like we we asked the local school board for money because we have a local school district, and they literally gave us like five hundred bucks. But we had to submit a proposal to them. That's it. So I said it's a grant, but really it's five hundred dollars. Like they said, and it helped. And we help them with like some outside with some tutoring, and so they give us the five hundred dollars in exchange for that. And it's really helping to keep these kids together. Like some kids, we have these older two men who are teaching kids how to fix bikes. We have these three ladies who are teaching these kids how to crochet, which is amazing. And then we have um, this other collective, which is giving kids like chores to do in the community for elderly people who like need their grass cut or need their back porch cleaned off and just to keep these kids busy. And they get like a small, like they get maybe five to ten dollars to, you know, for doing the chores and completing that and also getting their homework done and reading a book. Like they, they have learn- to come. Are they yeah. learning coding to keep them, you know, um, viable with this, you know, this uh, our digital uh, world that we're living in? Actually, the young, the young black actually, kids gonna need coding. 
we just actually the local school district just brought in this thing called black boys in tech which is actually teach giving them like tech skills not just coding but also like building computers and like drone using drones and building drones it's really interesting i'm i've just learned how to use a 3d printer myself so i'm not up to coding yet but yeah they they are doing that and the, but they're doing that in the local school district it's not a part of what i'm doing yeah. i'm just trying to give kids who are bored the and getting in trouble some to do anyway that's the way I, he, he is he's right i am babbling because but i just didn't appreciate him saying i don't care about the black community because i do okay let me get rob in rob go ahead robbie Blue. bro 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 what can i say how you doing deb listen uh Tariq. um i'm familiar with deb from some previous spaces she she is b1 she is a foundational black american well, we had some differences months ago, and I told people with the majority spirit predicting, I said, Joe Biden was a weak candidate, and I got flack from it because I said, they're going to end up swapping Joe Biden out, and everybody got mad, and you had a lot of black women in the DNC, and that was my big thing. I couldn't get people to separate B1 issues from intersectionality, so her whole thing was, you shouldn't say anything negative about Joe Biden, and then the thing that she equated was being overlooked and i'll let her explain it because i don't want anyone to feel like i'm putting words in her mouth this is like perfect for you to understand where my colon had to pile because she was equating black men getting shot by the police with her going to the store and a black uh what is it called uh young uh, she, she was using ageism and sexism and then she said p power and that's i said oh so she's a person who's big on feminism intersectionality oh. so black people you know black men getting shot in the street is on same par with you know uh uh ageism and and and, and intersectionality and she was a she was a biden sexual so yeah just that's just giving you a background of what you're dealing with Oh, thank you so much, Rob. Now um, I'm gonna tell you this. I didn't I don't I've never said P power. I don't use that, but the part where he's right, I didn't think Biden should do the whole step aside thing or pass the torch or whatever. He's right about that part. The rest of it he's kind of vague on, but whatever. But that's Debbie, what I mean. Are, do you consider yourself a feminist, ma'am? Of course. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Um, Deb, you're 53. You ain't got no biological kids. Um, of course I do. I have a 32 year old daughter who's in grad school. I told you I adopted my two little nephews. I have oh, a biological daughter. Okay, because I was gonna think I didn't know if you had a little stud thing going on. You're not a stud, are you? No, no, no. Very quite heterosexual. Thank you very much. And my partner is deceased. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Grew up in Iowa, right? I was born in Iowa, and then we moved. I grew up in Hamilton, Ohio. Is your daughter's dad, was he a white man? Oh, hell no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, white men do not interest me at all, which is another reason why I don't like Donald Trump. I mean, honestly and truly, I, no, I'm not interested in white men as partners at all. But hell, you I, like Paula Harris, and she has a white daddy, so damn it. There it is right there. <laughs> oh, I mean, hey, that's on her. That's not me. Uh, and the bottom <laughs> that's that's her little red wagon. That's not my problem. Uh, you know, she can she can sleep with who she wants to sleep with, but the bottom line is that's not me. So you stumping for her very hard with her Zay. I am. I really am. I really am. And it's not you know what the thing is? I don't shame people for who they sleep with. Like you love who you love, you do what you do. So that's not my problem. My problem is who she will be as president and what she is she going to do what she says she's going to do. My other problem is, is Donald Trump going to do what he says he's going to do? And if he does what he says he's going to do, I can't support that. I can't support him in the Department of Education when it funds so many things that our kids need. I can't support him deporting millions of people. Um, Why? Just Why? Because I'm not going to pick tomatoes and strawberries and crap. We need them people to put the crops. No, we no. Need, we have infl inflation is high. Yeah, I, I'm muting your ass right now. They These folks ain't just picking strawberries and no damn tomatoes. Y'all stop that lie. Still not doing it, though. Oh, no, y'all. No, these folks are not picking no damn strawberries. These folks are, are getting trained for real jobs and real careers out here. And black people are being denied that because you got all of these other people flooding the zone. It ain't no picking berries and tomatoes and all of that. 
Black people are being pushed by the wayside for these groups coming in here. Why are you cool with that, knowing that Black people are being pushed out of jobs? Why are you cool with that, Deb? I'm not. I see Black women out here going to college, starting businesses, Black men out here becoming doctors, lawyers, engineers. I don't see us getting pushed out of anything. Ma'am, well, your eyes are closed because I'm not where I live out here in L.A. There's homeless black people left and right. You go to New York, homeless black people left and right. You go to Atlanta, homeless people running up and down Peachtree. Folks don't have the opportunities they should have. Homeless black people in Chicago, the black people in Chicago are complaining about all of these immigrant groups coming in. How is that benefiting us, ma'am? Why are we ob- Well, I wish you would make up your mind which one it is. Either black people are like powerful. Go ahead. God, it's a double mute. Either black people are what? Go ahead, dear. Just unmute yourself, Deb. Just unmute yourself and talk. She's probably talking and not paying attention because she gets to babbling. She's babbling and don't realize that she probably hit the mute button. She's, it's, Deb, go ahead and unmute yourself, dear. Deb, un- I did not hit the mute button. You hit the mute button because you didn't like what I had to say. Oh, and oh. I don't understand what you need to make up your mind which one it is. Either black people are powerful and we are so and we can determine our own destinies, which you are a big proponent of, mm-hmm. or we're just so pathetic that we're homeless and we have no and it's and the, we're so weak that the immigrants can push us off the pedestal that we And let me pause that. Yeah. Weakness is sitting up here allowing politicians and supporting politicians to come bring in hostile ass people who are. I'm not hostile. I just don't agree with you. Well, man, you said I'm wait. You said you're from here, though. I said I was talking about immigrants. You said you're not hostile. So, man, was that a Freudian slip? Are you admitting to being an immigrant? That was a Freudian slip. No, you said you said. I know. You said people who are like not agreeing with you. Why would I? How, oh, no. how did I? Wait a minute. This woman just had a Freudian slip. She slipped up. Ma'am, it sounds like you have a secret immigrant background. You slipped up and just admitted that you were an immigrant, ma'am. Why did you that say that? You're an immigrant born in Iowa. That don't make no damn sense to anybody. Okay. It's like oh, you just oh. make up. A... But how am I going to be an immigrant born in not... Iowa living in Ohio? I said, no, why would you say that? Why would you slip up like that? I said, yeah, they're bringing over hostile immigrants. And you said, I'm not hostile. Why would you say that? Because I thought you were just talking about hostile people in general. It's like mishearing you, but that, I am not an immigrant, sweetie, beauty. I was born and raised here, period. Well, no, no. that makes it worse if you're not an immigrant and you have those views. Let me ask you real quick before I go on to what I was going to talk about, because you've been going on for a while. Do you think abortion rights are equal to George Floyd in importance? Yes. Lord Jesus. Yes, I do. I think it's every bit as serious. Having I've had an ectopic pregnancy, I would not want anybody making that decision for me. I would not want anybody telling me that I had to die or be close to death before I could take care of my existing children. No, that's it's it's very it's a life or death situation for women. What happened to George Floyd is one of the most unconscionable things in this country. It's hideous. It's hideous that people had to stand there and watch that police officer kneel on that man's neck under basically threat of being shot or arrested or harmed themselves. It's it's hideous. But we can walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. And so we're going to tell women that you have to die, that you have to lay there and practically die before you can be taken care of, before you can get health care, before you can have your own life saved. Nobody should be under that threat. Nobody should live under that gun. Nobody. Not George Floyd, not black women, not young girls being raped by their uncles or who are some pastor in a church. Nobody. Nobody should live under that threat. Nobody should have to beg for their own life. That man called out for his mama. He was dying and he knew it. It's one of the most horrible things we've collectively watched on this planet. 
But no woman should have to lay. No woman should. No woman should have to lay in a hospital room begging for her life. Nobody. What? No, nobody should have to do that. No. Nobody should have to. Slow down. What? How's a what? A woman in a hospital begging for her life? What? You lost me. Explain. We damn near lost Serena Williams because they wouldn't believe her about her own health history. They wouldn't believe she wasn't even trying to get an abortion. She gave birth to a healthy child. We have to listen to women. We have to listen to what. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, you conflating a whole bunch of stuff. We went to abortion to Serena Williams. So, yeah, you do that whole sleight of hand thing where you just conflate a bunch of different issues. Let me get my brother Matt. How's it going, brother? I'm good, brother. How you doing, Mav? Good, good. Yeah. Um, I'm not following what Deb is saying. She's kind of all over the board. But going back to the immigration, how do you support a group of people that is coming in to this country? Ten million people have crossed the border over the last year, costing taxpayers one hundred and fifty billion dollars that you have to pick up that tab. You have to pay for that. So you're okay with the administration giving these people SNAP benefits for $13,000, handing out all this money to everybody else. And again, black people, are, especially us, are, are at the bottom of the barrel. How is that? How does that equate to, to anything else? And you're saying, and then you're talking about, you're, you're, you're saying that, that abortion rights is the same as the George Floyd situation. Like how, like who who's paying you? Who's educating you on these issues? Me. But how because is that I don't, the thing? I don't, get, I don't how understand that... how you cannot understand that that man had to beg for his life on the ground and he died. And no, I don't I... see how you don't understand how do you don't understand that no woman should have to beg for health care before she dies. No, no one. Who oh, was the young crazy. lady who just went? Who was the young lady who just? A weak ass correlation. <laughs> Good Lord. I don't see how that's weak. It seems to me it's part and parcel of the same thing. Hi, you, hey, somebody's killing me right now, and who I got to beg to go to the abortion clinic because I was banging. No, niggas. not beg to go to the abortion clinic. Don't beg to go to an abortion clinic. You just go. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Who's begging at a hospital? You sit your ass down there and wait to get seen. Nobody's. That's a real weak correlation, dear. That was a weird, weak correlation. Man, let me ask you something. Well, hold on. It's like you don't understand how triage works in a hospital. Do, when you go to a hospital, they take the most urgent cases first. That means gunshot. Okay, reparation. Wait. Um, Wilkins, hop in real quick, brother. All right. Thank you, brother. Um, it's, it's a blessing. Thank you, brother Tariq. Let me go ahead and say this right quick to uh, our older sister. Uh, I'll say this. When it comes down to voting for that, you didn't learn your lesson when it came to Barack Obama. He was a straight up Kenyan more than he was one of us. He's not foundational and neither is Kamala. And then you were willing to vote for that old decrepit uh, Jim Crow Joe. The one who stood up there at the end, the very pinnacle, actually, of 2020 and said that we don't need to defund the police. We need to fund them. We need to fund them. Are you crazy? Right now, right now, we're closer than we ever been to pushing for reparations, which is reparative for what has happened to us for over 200 years. Donald Trump ain't time. giving us reparations. I'm not done, Deborah. We don't have time <laughs> to push in foolishness or operate in ignorance. That's what I'm telling you. Donald Trump ain't giving us reparations. You crazy if you think I you will. Say, I, didn't, I didn't say I was voting for Donald Trump. You crazy as a mug to, to be voting for somebody that idolized Robert Byrd. There's only Robert two Byrd, choices on the ballot. There's a president. president leader. There's either Kamala Harris now, or when it Donald comes Trump. To Kamala Harris, she ain't even one of us. Never has been. She was an ex-prosecutor, top cop, putting us in jail out here in California. And the move that she makes is because her ideology has her looking toward immigrants over us. 
Okay, and that's not a that's not a brand new thing. That's an old trick of white supremacy. They always been putting white immigrants, then the the little bit darker immigrants, the ones that they didn't used to call white. You know what I'm saying? So now the next people up is the Hispanics, and people like you are enabling that. You will go to a rally and see black people shaking their ass up on stage and think, hmm, I'm going to vote for that. Come on now. Mm. No fucking no voting. Come on now. Do you think you're getting respected or are you being treated like an idiot that you acting like? Mm. You ain't got to answer. My man, my man, eight on that one. Go ahead, Deb. I don't see Donald Trump doing the YMCA dance and being any different. I mean, honestly, all he's building is a cult of personality. And he's only trying to save his own ass from prison. He he's ain't... only trying to save his own ass from lawsuits. He doesn't know. You talk about somebody who. The answer is always, well, with Trump over there doing something else, too. All right. It's never, hey, well, then you, you can never explain for your candidate when everybody points out how janky. Kamala is, and I, I pronounce it Kamala. I'm not East Indian. Well, just, I'm, I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. We should call you Tariq. Uh, I'm, I'm a foundational Black American. I put accents on different words, all right? Um, I, I'm not East Indian. I don't eat biryani chicken. It's Kam Kamala. It's Kamala for me. Um, oh. But with Kamala, you guys will just completely deflect from all the little janky stuff that she does. You have to deflect from her janky record and how weak of a candidate she is. Then why do y'all do that? Hmm? Deb? Deb, hop on, Deb. Okay, Tarek. So here we go. So here's what I here's what happens. If I tell you why, if I tell you why I like Kamala Harris, you tell me I'm caping for her. And then if I talk about what Trump does, you go, well, you should talk about Kamala. Yeah, because you're babbling. You ask what you what you like with Kamala, and then you start talking about um the hostage care for your mom. It it becomes like a little personal thing. And my thing is I'm looking out. All politics is local. All politics is personal. We but, all take issues that. But, we but no, no, no. Politics affect groups as a whole, and a lot of people work as a group for what's going to benefit their group. So when exactly, the, and my group so is the mother. Hispanic, the Hispanic community they work as a group to get tangibles for that group. The LGBT they work as a group. The Jewish community, they work as a group to get things for that group, the Native Americans. With us, we're supposed to be on some kumbaya. We're supposed to foot the bill for every damn body. Debbie, you're, you're supporting immigration. How has immigration helped foundational Black Americans? How do you think it's helped us? Go ahead, Deb. That's a question. Whether Hopefully you don't babble. How does immigration help foundational Black Americans, Deb? And why should we support it? Why should we support just an open border of people coming over here? How does that benefit us in any way, shape, or form? Why should we support that? Go ahead, Deb. Unmute yourself, beloved. Tell you what, anytime he has muted by host up, I'm just going to flash the purple heart so you know that it actually says muted by host instead of me. Because he does that. He goes, oh, please speak, beloved. And then it still says muted by host and he hasn't unmuted me. It makes <laughs> it sound like I'm not paying attention or listening. I'm paying attention and listening very much. Like, I'm paying attention. I'm just telling you what he's doing and what his tactic is because that's Deb, what he does. Deb, you're so, being babbling, dear. That's, that's what I'm not said. babbling. I just don't agree with you, Tariq. Yeah, Stop. See, I had to mute you now. You got a thing where you just babble. The audience don't want to hear babbling. They want to hear an actual answer, dear. They want to hear an answer. And I have to mute you so you can stop babbling so that we can get some decorum in here. This is not the battle Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out your space and I'm going to lay on my plane here. But, I, I'm gonna, I got to go change out this laundry. The dryer stop, the washer stop. I got to go get breakfast ready for 5 a.m. So I got things to do. Right. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Answer the uh, question. You asked me. 
Okay, I want you to answer the question, you land your plane after that. How does immigration help us? How do foundational Black Americans benefit from immigration? Go ahead, beloved. Because everybody that comes here is not coming from Mexico. There are, I don't, don't look at me. That's not even my issue. You asked me what my original issue was and why I was voting for Kamala. It had nothing to do with immigration. It had everything to do with me trying to take care of my mama. So don't get me started on immigrants. I don't damn it know. I don't have all the answers. You don't. Okay, so you don't know. So you're doing something. You don't know why you're doing it. That's called insanity. No, I know why I'm doing it. It's just not the reason. Said you don't know. If you're doing something that you know is asinine and you're doing it anyway, that's insanity, ma'am. And that's what the Democrats want us to do. You too. Y'all want us to do some. I know why I'm voting for Kamala Harris. Want us to do some insane, irrational nonsense for whatever reason. Why? Why do you want us to do that, ma'am? That's not even practical. You know it's not practical. That's why you don't, you don't even have an answer as to why. So is your mother being taken care of with the health program? That's going to be there anyway. That health program is not going anywhere. If Trump comes into office, your mom ain't going to fall off a cliff nowhere. That health program is still going to be there. So that's a flimsy justification. It's not there now, and it will be. As a matter of fact, Aetna, has, because of what she said, has already started contacting seniors like about you know the eventual help, what who's going to need home health care aides, and they're already trying to project it. Which no, 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 no. So what do you mean they don't have it now? What the the, the program ain't in place now? Why isn't it not in place now? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's not in place now. Why? Because Medicare doesn't cover home health care unless you come home from the hospital as a matter of policy. It just you, know, does. you do know Kamala and Joe Biden are in office now, okay? They're in office right now. Why haven't they implemented this thing right now since you're talking about what they're going to do in the future? They're in office now. So why didn't because they implement Medic Because the office of the president can't just change Medicare. You know who found that out? George W. Bush, when he implicated Medi when he implemented Medicare Part D to help seniors with their prescriptions, it takes an act of Congress. It takes an act of. So then, what are you? If Kamala can't do nothing about it now, why are you gonna support her in the future in November, and she still can't do nothing about it? Explain, please. Make it make sense. The same reason that George W. Bush, we supported George W. Bush when he did Medicare Part D. When he first did it, it wasn't a complete program, but he understood the need for seniors to have better prescription costs. And it was his idea. It wasn't Dick Cheney's idea or anybody else. George W. Bush. Had Deb, if you don't get your babbling ass off here, now you're just saying any damn thing. I'm not saying anything. Look it up. Okay, you don't. You Babble Joe ass off. You done went back to George W. Bush ain't got a damn thing to do with what Kamala. It does I, now. You asked me a question. You just don't like the answer. I don't want babbling. You're making no sense. You just start babbling about some non sequiturs that ain't got nothing to do with anything, Deb. That's the, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Democrats right here. This is the Democrats right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Democrat mindset. This is why so many people are shying away from the Democrats. All this nonsensical ass babbling that don't make no sense. People aren't on that no more, man. Nobody wants to hear that. It's real out here in these streets. People are jobless out here. You got folks out here replacing people's employment. You got people out here coming across the border committing crime. You got a lot of janky stuff that's happening out here. Nobody got time for no babbling. We need answers. We need tangibles. We need business handled. For real, for real. You ask Debbie a question, she just gets to babbling about all of these non sequiturs. Good Lord. That's the that's like Kamala Harris. You sound like Kamala, Debbie. No wonder you like Kamala, because you ask Kamala a question, she gets to babbling just like you. Hey, hey Kamala, what are you going to do about... um? Like um some of the reparations. Well, you know, listen, you know, I grew up in a middle class community, okay? I went to a black church. I made collard greens in a tub. I made black eyed peas. I went to an HBCU. I listened to Funkadelic and Tupac and 
Evelyn Champagne King. And you better thank a union member. <laughs> Just Do you want me to answer your question or not? Okay, d- no, because I, it's just going to be babble. It's going to be babble. So just thank a union member. Just thank a union well, member. It's really not. Here's what it is. Oh, God. To change Medicare takes an act of Congress. Oh. And I use George W. Bush as an example of that. And so they have to work with Congress in order to change it. The president can't just unilaterally. Unilater- Good night, Deb. That's enough of Deb. Thank you, Deb. I'm not about to hear no damn babbling. Man. God damn, they be babbling. Well, the Democrats, y'all chap my ass with that damn babbling. Can't answer nothing. Y'all know it's nonsensical to support these damn policies. And all y'all want to do is babble in circles and talk nonsense. Y'all are very annoying with that. Nikki, go ahead, beloved. Hey, Tariq. Um, so when it comes down to people like Deb, she has a goal, and her goal is to convince everyone to stay on a democratic plantation. The home health care problem is not as complicated as she's trying to make it seem. I get what she's saying about how you have to be in the hospital to get immediately immediate home health care aid, because I've written out orders for those things. But there are pilot programs within programs that will assist her with getting the help she needs at home for her mother. She's just um, not doing her research. She's just um, her purposely doing that. Right. Uh, we, me and Wani and Professor, we were just talking about collective self-esteem within our lineage, and having collective self-esteem means loving your lineage, our lineage enough so much that we put the needs of our lineage first. It means right. not not supporting someone who pretends to be black, who prioritizes illegal immigrants over us, and who blatantly said she's not going to do anything for us. Um, I I understand, just like I said, I understand Deb's stance on um health care, but she's a great representation of having collective low self-esteem. And just because you're willing to accept the broad issues, of, just because she's willing to accept the broad issues that the Democratic Party is serving to her on a plate. Um, once we get our reparations, we can use that money to disperse health care needs within our community as we see fit. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit back and argue with somebody like Deb because she's obviously has this need to please her oppressors. Right. Now, on to Barack Obama. I'm not sure who Barack Obama thought he was getting through to by bringing up Eminem on stage. I don't think it was effective at all. I'm also willing to go as far as saying that this was his way of saying F you, in particular to foundational Black Americans for a couple of reasons. Foundational Black Americans have been giving him pushback for the way that he talked down to um, Black men. Right. As a matter of fact, people across the board have been giving Barack Obama the business and letting him know how ineffective he was as president and how arrogant of a person he is. The second reason I don't think that it was effective is, is because I think he chose to bring out Eminem because these people study what goes on in our circles. They understand we are claiming a genre that belongs to us because we created it. They already know about you. They already know about us. They already know about microphone check. They already know about conversations that take place on social media. Barack Obama is not of our lineage. Um, What non-FBAs have been doing to gain power is the same old cosplaying and supporting of the stealing of our culture. We all know that Eminem um, falls into that category and that he never was a a revered person in the hip hop industry. He was presented as no different than Vanilla Ice was, and he was just some white rapper who some people cheered for because they saw him near real legitimate OGs in hip hop. That is why Kamala Harris chose to speak with people like Luke and Roland Martin because they are in line with the tethering tactic that many people of the Democratic Party are in line with. So I firmly believe that was just as simple as Barack Obama saying, F you, F your culture, and F your reparations, and that's all. There you go. Thank you so much, beloved. But yeah, Deb, you know what it is. And my brother Mikhail just hit me up with something, you know, and he he said something very important in the back channels. Well, when people get to babbling, when you ask them something, family, and they can't really give you a straight answer, that means there's something else going on. And we're trying to get an angle. Now, she's from the lineage. That's what she said. She slipped up a couple of times and said some questionable things. But it sounds like, and that's why I kept asking her about where she's getting her funding for her nonprofit. 
Sounds like she's like some kind of democratic poll worker or something. Because for her to do all that babbling and that nonsensical shilling, and people don't do nothing for a reason, for no reason. You don't do something and you don't stump for something for no reason. There's a reason why you do something. Um, she's up there in um, Cincinnati, right? Uh, very important state. And sounds like she might be some kind of volunteer poll worker or something. She's clicked in with the Democrats for real, for real, not just the voter. She's, you know, she's in the community with them. You know, she's an older lady. So, you know, that's something to get out the house for. So she's going to be passionate about that, no matter how nonsensical it is. Yeah. Something, something is going on there. But just all of that babbling when you ask somebody a question. Yeah. Say, hey, you know, what, what's what's this medical policy? How come Kamala and those guys hadn't done it now? Well, you got to understand that George Bush had some Medicaid. And then when he had the Medicaid, um, 9-11 happened. And then Osama bin Laden blew up all the Medicaid. It got blew up with Obama, with, with um, Osama bin Laden. That's where the Medicaid went. You just get to talking crazy. Just saying anything. Lord, sweets. Peace, family. Peace, Tariq. Hey, sweets. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Um, I, I really just wanted to chime in on what Deb was saying about uh, Kamala's uh, international relations and the relationship she was building. And if I'm not mistaken, when Kamala was doing her uh, relations tour, um, she was talking about LGBTQ with everybody. Right. Um, and as a matter of fact, like even when she was in Africa, I believe she said she was going to sanction certain countries because they weren't down with the LGBTQ message that she was pushing. Um, about yeah. Exactly. So so uh, as far as I know, that's the only message that she had when she was building those relationships was LGBTQ. And then real quick, I just wanted to touch on the education system. Um, our, our public education system here in America just sucks. Uh, in the black community is terrible. So I don't understand why people are getting so upset when Trump, I'm not advocating for him. I'm just saying, I feel like we should gut the, the public education system. We, we need to gut it and start again and even bring back um, uh, trade, trade school programs. Um, so, you know, cause everybody's not going to college and righteously they're not even trying to, a degree doesn't even matter at this point. Cause Kamala says she's going to give you a job whether you can read or not. And right now, these kids can barely read. So I feel like the education system needs to be gutted, and we need to start over and try again because what's happening right now is not working. And that's Real just talk. where I wanted to land. Thank you. But yeah, man, look, look, Kamala, Deb, and I know you're listening. Your girl is weak, man. Kamala's weak. She's not, that woman doesn't have good leadership skills. She doesn't have good leadership skills. She's a train wreck. And Deb was talking about how she was bringing countries together. Man, when that woman went over there to the Ukraine, she she met with the Ukrainian president. And a couple of days later, the war broke out. It got popping. <laughs> so she took her funky, musty energy over there. And I don't know what happened. But she went over there to the Ukraine. And when she got back, it was bombs being dropped. And people were scrapping and then we had to send money over there to the ukraine right that after her ass left i don't want her going over she probably over there cackling to them and they're like oh hell no and she was over there probably cackling her ass off when she went over there talking all that dumb ass stuff yeah and deb you be sounding just like her all that babbling she probably went over there babbling just like you deb they were like, so, Miss um, Kamala Harris, um, what type of plans do you have for international trade? Well, you know what? You know what? I make greens in a bathtub, okay? And I was a prosecutor in, in Northern California. And you know what else is in Northern California? Bigfoot, okay? Bigfoot is in Northern California, okay? And over here in Russia and the Ukraine, you got your own version of Bigfoot. It's called a Yeti, 
Okay. So if we can bring Bigfoot and Yeti together, I believe, okay, it's my understanding that we can possibly get world peace. And when you bring Bigfoot and the Yeti together, you better thank a union member. <laughs> they were like, um, yeah, yeah. um, get the military on the phone. We're going to drop bombs tonight. <laughs> She went over there and made the whole block hot with her goofy ass. Hell, I don't want her over there negotiating nothing with her little goofy ass anecdotals nonsense. I don't want her touching nothing. Let, let her be over here. Sit on, sit down somewhere. Good freaking grief, man. With all that babbling. You know, man, that babbling ain't cool. That babbling is not cool. Oh, goodness. Um, let me get my brother. Let's get uh, Mr. Righteous in. Brother Righteous, hop on in, brother. Brother Righteous, what's up, sir? Hey, man, great assessment by you guys uh, of Miss Debbie. I really was waiting for someone to ask if her daughter was biracial. Mm, yes. I, I smelled a hint of suspected BW, and uh, I just wanted to really know that because anytime you side with someone like Gloria Steinman, who's a known CIA informant who was funded during the feminist movement, it, it, it brings the question next of, you know, are you a suspected bad witch? Mm, mm, Deb. Deb said she, she don't like white dudes. She said she don't I don't know. I don't know. She says she don't, but I don't know. Let's get Corey. Let's get Corey J in the building. Corey J. Miss Corey J. Corey J, unmute your microphone, ma'am. If you can unmute that microphone, that would be great. If you can unmute it, Corey. All right. Corey is not unmuting that microphone. So. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. There it is. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I Sorry. I was trying to type. I'm not really good at typing. I was looking for your friend here that you were talking to earlier. I think she's I think she's awesome. What's her name? Um Deb, was it Deb? Deb. I really like Deb. Okay. Are you you're, you're a Kamala supporter? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, okay, shit. Okay. <laughs> Is Deb still here? <laughs> Deb, Deb, where are you, dear? Hold on. Where's Deb? Hold on. Uh, Deb, where but go ahead, Corey. What's on your mind? Oh, uh, no. I mean, I just understand, like, people go through different stuff in their life. Like, we all have a different path that we walk. And I think that Deb's got some great points in her universe. I, You're funny. You're like, are you a Kamala supporter? I'm like, uh, nah. <laughs> but um, I, just, I had something I wanted to say to her. I can't remember what it was. She seems like a sweetheart in a silent kind of a aggressive sort of way. I just wanted to tell her that I think that she's got a heart of gold and I think that her and I probably could talk about different things together that we probably have a lot of different, um, so bizarre, but like different points of life where we probably connect in a common, in a common plan. You're playing. Y'all will connect because you kind of babbling too. Okay. So yeah, y'all probably do have something in common is the ebony and ivory of babbling. Shit. We we got babbling on each side. White babbling and black babbling. Lord. It's gonna be a babbling buddy flick. Lord. Bonnie and Babble. Yeah, you were babbling too, Corey. So I I, I guess you guys do have something in common. That's what y'all have in common. Babbling and ivory. All right, um, Ethereum, whatever your name is. Go ahead, Ethereum. Ethereum, hop on, sir. Let's get you on here. You're messing up the flow, brother. Oh, he got up out of here. All right. Let's get some more fun. And shout out to Deb, even though ideologically I disagree with Deb. Deb, Deb seems like she could be a solid chick. I just, with all that babbling. 
Deb actually seems like she is a cool chick. She, you know, just does a lot of that damn babbling because she's probably some poll worker where whatever. But Deb sounds like she can make some good ass potato salad, though. You just got to hear all that babbling while you're eating it. Like, shut your ass up and let me eat this salad. God damn it. Stop talking so I can digest the food. I don't want to hear this babbling. <laughs> yeah. She'd probably be babbling on how she made it. You know, I got some potatoes when I was in Idaho, and I cut the potatoes up, and the white man had chased me, and then I had to call Kamala to come get me. <laughs> okay, Lord. <laughs> Oh, God, you got to get a babbling story with a potato salad. I don't want to hear that. Uh, let me see who else we got. <laughs> Let's see who we got in there. Good Lord. Let's see. We got a lot of folks in the building. Uh, a lot of people in the building. I ain't going to be here too, too long because I got stuff to do. All right. Let's get D.W. What's your name? D. Let's get D in here. See, D got the little, she got a little bayang in her head. Go on, D, with your bayang. You got that old school bayang. Come on, D. D got one of them old school bayangs from back in the day. Come on, D, hop on, beloved. D, hop on. Where you at, D? Come on with your bayang. Pull your bayang to the side and hop on. D got that color purple bayang. Like she about to run for Mister. Come on, D, hop on in here, dear. Mister ain't gonna get you. Like D ain't saying nothing. I hate when you got in the ring. She she got out. I, she didn't like me talking about her bayang. All right. Let me see. Let's get some a couple of more good callers in. And shout out to everybody in here. We are um, shit, damn near fourteen hundred people in here. Shout out to all of you guys in here. Um, Darius, let's see what Darius is talking about. Mr. Darius. All right. <coughs> Darius, hop on and then we'll get Einstein or Einstein. Darius. And then How you I... doing, Tariq, man? Hey, there you go, brother. Darius from Crenshaw. What's up, brother? No, nah, man, I was just hearing that Deborah, um, lady, man. And I just wanted to, you know, tell you that, like, a lot of Democratic shows, what they know for doing is something called, like, sign language. So, like, you know, shame and so it's guilty need to be right. You know, they just, and she was doing a lot of that projecting you know on on to you and also um i wanted to say about um you know where slauson and western is that over there where there's a shopping center yeah the swap hello yeah yeah can you hear me yeah uh -huh. yeah the swap me you know about the yeah. swap me well yeah it's, it's like with little caesar and stuff that like, man it's a lot of illegal immigrants out over there like a lot of hispanics and shit like when the police come they get the hell on man because a lot of them in that paperwork man <laughs> Day you know. huh? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're day laborers over there. Yeah, they work as day laborers. They there and um, there's a um, a Home Depot. Um, where's that Home Depot that oh, they be? Oh, Slauson and Western. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's where the Home Depot is. Yeah. 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 They are. That's where they they are the day laborers over there. They um yeah they be out there heavy. They be out there with their trucks and the whole. And I know they're out there real deep right now. But yeah, they be out there heavy. Oh, I know about it. Oh, I'm already knowing. Einstein. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. What's up, brother? Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify some that that Deb said about the Department of Education. I actually think it's a really good idea to to gut the Department of Education. And the, and on the surface, it sounds like a bad idea, right? Like, why would you gut uh, a department dedicated for education? Well, th the thing is. A lot of the reasons that people don't want to gut it is because they say, well, how are the public schools going to be funded? But the thing is, the Department of Education doesn't fund public schools. All that funding comes from your your state and your local taxes. But the thing is, we spend about 50 billion a year for the Department of Education and only like three percent or something goes to actual schools. So the proposal right now is we take that 50 billion dollars and just give all of it to the states, which sounds like a much better idea. I just want to clarify that based on what, what Deb said. There you go. Thank you for making um, some clarity on that. I appreciate it. All right, fam, let me get up out of here, man. I'll be on here all night, man. I thank everybody for tuning in. Listen, I need everybody to go to Hidden History Museum. 
If everybody can go to Hidden History Museum who's here, make a contribution to the Hidden History Museum. That's um, one of our institutions here in L.A. that we do great things for the community. Make your contribution to Hidden History Museum at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. And you can also get the book Hidden Heroes from A to Z. It's a phenomenal children's book. Get that. Also, go to RootworkStyle.com to get the best deodorant in the world, Rootwork. We got different scents to choose from for your level of must. And go to microphonecheck.com for the movie microphone check. And to get your snapback caps, go to official. Thank you.